calling the joint hearing of Health Human Services and Consumer Protection for decision making 929 calendar. Present with me is myself and um, Vice Chair uh, Senator Aquino and Member Senator Awa. For Commerce and Consumer Protection, it's myself, uh, Vice Chair Senator Carol Fukunaga, and Member Senator Brenton Awa. Okay. So, um, Chair's recommendation for SB 375 is to delete everything after Section A-16, but add the following. The authority will adopt rules pursuant to Chapter 91 concerning licensing, fees, operations, and testing, and all issues concerning the dispensing, sale, taxation for adult use cannabis. The authority shall adopt such rules by December 1, 2024. The filing of applications pursuant to such rules for licenses shall begin by January 31, 2025, and the issuance of licenses pursuant to such rules shall begin no later than March 30, 2025. We're going to add a new section to A7, uh, A17 to transfer all jurisdiction, excuse me, all jurisdiction from Chapter 329D to the authority, including jurisdiction over medical marijuana dispensary, operations, licensing, testing, and administration. Add a new section as Section A-18 to establish that possession of cannabis by an adult and the amount of four ounces or less shall be legal, and that all convictions for an adult possession of four ounces of cannabis or less shall be expunged. We're also going to include an appropriation for Department of Health to implement um, this bill. And the committee report shall reflect that in drafting its rules, the authority may consider the contents of this bill, the testimony submitted for the February 16, 2023 hearing of this bill, and the report submitted by the Dual Use Task Force. Any comments, questions, <laughs> concerns? Chair? Yes. Respectfully, I'll be going with reservations. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Vice Chair for the vote, Chair votes aye. Okay, Senate Bill 375, recommendation of the chairs to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes with reservations. Senator Mori Waki. It's excused. Senator Shimon Pro. It's excused. Senator Awa. No. Thank you very much. Recommendation is adopted. Okay. And consumer protection, same recommendation. Chair votes aye. Thank you, Vice Chair Bolzai. Uh, Senator McCarthy is excused. Senator Richards? No. Uh, Senator Awa? Aye. Thank you. <coughs> Measures adopted. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning and welcome to this 9.30 a.m. Uh, February 16th uh, hearing. This is the Senate Committee on Commerce and Consumer Protection, uh, Room 229. We are here to hear for five, six bills on this agenda. And uh, in the unlikely event that we must abruptly end this hearing, Due to technical difficulties, the committee will try to reconvene to discuss any outstanding business as soon as we are able to, seeing as this is a, a deadline day and we would like to keep the majority of these measures which have um, multiple referrals moving. As always, we uh, respectfully request that you keep your comments to two minutes or less. We have received uh, all of your written testimony. I've personally reviewed every piece of testimony if you would like to uh, specifically highlight any new information or clarify your written comments, then please feel free to do so with your two minutes or you can always stand on your testimony and we uh, could potentially call you up and ask questions if any of the members uh, would like clarifications on your testimony. Uh, the first measure is SB 402 relating to common interest communities. 
Uh, this measure prohibits planned community associations, condominium associations, or their boards of directors from expending association funds to enforce against de minimis violations of association bylaws, rules, or regulations that result in not more than three complaints from separate units in the association within a calendar year, or result in a fine of not more than $500 per violation pursuant to uh, the bylaws, rules, or regulations of the association. Uh, first up, we have uh, CAI Hawaii chapter in opposition. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chairman of the committee. Um, we stand in opposition. We stand on our testimony, but we are going to take the question to you. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Philip Nerney in opposition. Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members, I said the question. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Paul Ireland Poftano in opposition. Uh, good morning, Chair Caleb Lilley, Vice Chair for the Talk My name is Carter Paul Ireland Poftano. Thank you very much. Uh, Greg Misakian in support. Please proceed. Good morning. Aloha. My name is Greg Misakian and I do support SB 402. I stand on my testimony and I, I hope that you all um, also support this, this measure. It's very important for owners to, um, to also have a voice in this. I know there's a lot of people that are testifying today or just standing on their testimony, but very important for owners to have a voice and their associations as a whole to have a voice because this measure will help to reduce a lot of unnecessary costs and conflicts uh, that arise from these um, fines that are sometimes contested or improperly uh, cited to owners. So I appreciate the time to, to testify and I do stand on my testimony. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have written testimony from the following individuals who indicated they would not be present. But if you are present online or in the room, please feel free to identify yourself and uh, come to testify if you so choose. We have uh, Michael Goliu Sr. of the Palihua Townhouse Association in opposition, uh, the Honolulu Tower AOAO in opposition, uh, Primrose Leong Nakamoto testifying for the AOUO Puamoho Camp in opposition, uh, law offices of Mark K. McKellar in opposition, Waikoloa Village Association in opposition, Kulalani at Manalani Association of Apartment Owners in opposition, AOAO Lakeview Sands in opposition, Kiala Owailea AOUO in opposition, Marsha Kimura in support, Jeff Sedino in support, Richard Emery in opposition, Lynn Marisau in opposition, Joyce Baker in opposition, Lila Moore in support, Carol Walker in opposition, Lance Fujisaki in opposition, Lori Sokech in opposition, Elaine Ponlilio in opposition, Steve Glanstein in opposition, David Berg in opposition, David Levi in opposition, uh, Hawaii Council for Association of Apartment Owners uh, in opposition. Yeah, I stand on my testimony in opposition. Thank you for standing on your testimony. Uh, Department of Taxation. Oh, that's all the testimony we have on this measure. Uh, Senate Bill 402. Uh, yes, please. May I Please, good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and member of the committee. My name is Jeff Sedino, and I support this bill. Too often, a small fine can balloon into thousands of dollars when the AOAO hires an attorney at $300 an hour to collect on a $100 fine. It is one behavior that contributes to the fact that Hawaii has more legal claims against board members financially harassing individual owners than states many times our size. My source is the April 7, 2018 condo Rama, where Sue Savio, who is the de facto representative of the condo insurance industry, was the speaker. Quote, directors and officers, one company left Hawaii, we're done. We don't like Hawaii anymore. You folks have more claims than anybody else. We're out of here. You're a small state with just a few dollars that you give us, and you have more claims than New York, 
and we pay out more here, and you have more claims and we pay out more than we do in Florida, we're done. And California, we beat them all. As small of a state as we are with our little 1700 condos, they are paying out more directors and officers claims. So this one company has left. This other company sent us a list and said, we are going to have a rate increase in Hawaii. I wasn't surprised. I knew this was coming anywhere from 25 to 65%, end quote. For context, Hawaii has 1,800 associations. California has 49,000. Florida has 49,000. And New York has 14,000. And yet somehow Hawaii has more boards behaving badly than these much larger states. I think this bill would reduce the retaliation that masquerades around as enforcement and also help slow the rising cost of housing via rising insurance costs. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to testify on this measure? Okay, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move to the next measure on the agenda, SB 884, relating to leasehold conversion. This excludes from taxation 100% of the gain realized by a fee simple owner from the sale of a lease fee interest in units within a condominium project, cooperative project, or plan unit development to the association of apartment owners or the residential cooperative housing corporation of the leasehold units. It applies to taxable years beginning after December 31st, 2022 and ending prior to January 1st, 2030. Uh, first up, we have the Department of Taxation offering comments. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Kathy Davenport. I'm here on behalf of the Department of Taxation. Thank you for allowing us to give our testimony. The Department stands with the right Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have uh, the Hawaii Council for Association of Apartment Owners and Support. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, thank you for allowing me to testify. Hawaii Council has always supported leasehold uh, conversion of uh, condominiums, and this is not a new law. It's an, we're asking to re reenact an old law that was in effect and it allowed condominiums uh, condominium lessees to acquire their fee uh, because it motivated the uh, fee owner to sell to lessees and we're just asking you to do it because there are partially converted condominiums in Waikiki and co-ops um, you know that would benefit from this and we also know of some uh, condominiums in, in Maui uh, that are you know family owned uh, leasehold Type of, and, and this would hopefully motivate the lessors to sell their uh, lease uh, fees to their lessees so that the unit owners uh, don't lose their homes at the end of the, of the uh, leases. And so we ask that you pass out this bill to, uh, to protect, to, to allow them to keep their homes. Thank you for allowing me to testify. I'll be available for the questions. Thank you very much. Tax Foundation offering comments. President on Zoom, Chair. Did you say not present on Zoom? Not present. Not, I'm not present? Yes, they're not present. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marsha Kimura in support. Richard Emery in support. Derek Wong in support. Bryant Wong in support. Debbie Oride in support. Is there anyone else who would like to testify on this measure? Okay, members, any questions? Vice Chair. Um, the tax department, can you, um, oh. In your testimony, you referenced some of the prior pieces of legislation that authorized uh, this short-term uh, income tax credit. Can you provide the revenue loss estimates or I guess the actual revenue uh, loss figures for the years in which those two, um, I guess, three extensions were in effect? Right now, we don't have the numbers. I did try to check to see if they came out yet. Okay. They're still researching. So okay, thank you. thank you. Okay, members, any other questions? All right, we'll move to the next measure, SB 921. 
Uh, relating to limitations of actions, this clarifies that no statute of repose shall affect a condominium association's right of action against a condominium developer sooner than two years after the period of developer control terminates. Uh, Hawaii Council for Associations uh, of Apartment Owners, in support. Yes, um, we stand and are on our testimony in support and we join in the position of CAI on this one. Thank you. Thank you for standing on your testimony. Philip Nerney in support. Thank you for standing on your testimony. Terry Revere in support. Uh, good morning, good Mr. Morning. Chair. Um, thank you for allowing uh, me to testify remotely. Um, I uh, uh, stand on my testimony, except I just want to add one thing in that real life example that I gave, uh, the consequences to those homeowners would have been for very significant construction defects. They would have been paying $10 million out of the homeowner's pockets. And the beneficiaries of a misreading of this statute wouldn't have even been local developers. It would have been uh, three out-of-state insurance companies, one out-of-country insurance company, Lloyd's of London. So uh, I, I can go into more of the gory details of the lawsuit, but uh, 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 rest assured, if this uh, situation wasn't eventually corrected by a second judge in a private arbitration, uh, local homeowners would have been on the hook for $10 million and insurance companies that took premiums um, uh, from the developer that were ultimately paid by the homeowners would have gotten off scot-free. So it's a, it's a significant issue and important one. And I appreciate the committee taking a look at it. And I, I, other than that, if you folks have any questions, I'll be happy to address them, but I'll just stick by my written testimony otherwise. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have the Palihua Townhouse Association in support. CIA Legislative Action Committee Hawaii chapter in support. Uh, Richard Emery in support. Uh, William McKeon in support. Uh, Laurie McGuire in support. David Levi in support. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Members questions? Okay. The next measure is Senate Bill 855 relating to condominium reserve requirements. This requires condominiums to include the estimated cost of fire safety equipment or installations as part of their estimated replacement reserves. Uh, first up, uh, Ms. Sugimura in support. Uh, we stand on our testimony. Thanks for standing on your testimony. Richard Emery in support. Good morning. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Uh, some of you may know that I'm a reserve specialist. I'm on the National Task Force for Reserve Study of Public Policy. I primarily do consulting for associations on reserve studies and related condominium issues today. So I'm speaking as an individual. The bill as originally written potentially poses a great hardship on the association. When you do a reserve study, you look at when you're going to fix it, how much money do you need, and it calculates back to how much money you have to collect on a monthly basis. And the example I did in my testimony showed in a simple 100 unit condominium that component alone could add as much as $400 a month to the maintenance fees over the top that they're paying down. I offered some amendments in the bill to allow the life safety. I, I was on the life safety committee with the fire department. I'm in support of life safety, but you need to have kind of a fallback position to allow them to forecast borrowing and other measurements to fund it now. Otherwise, they're all going to run in and opt out of it as provided for in the ordinance, and then you're going to be worse off. So uh, I proposed this with amendments, and I added some additional amendments because when Act 62 was passed last year, it left some pukas on, uh, on how things are interpreted. So I support this bill, but with the amendments I proposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Larry McGuire in support. Palihua Townhouse Association in support. Jonathan Billings in support. David Levi in support. 
Marsha Kimura in support. Lila Moore in support. Nancy Masuda in support. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? <laughs> Members' questions. Chair. Senator McKelvey. Uh, Jane. Yes. You heard Richard's testimony that the bill as drafted was opposed to. Um, however, I guess, am I, correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, um, but if there were amendments made um, to the bill as indicated in his testimony, he would support it. Are you of the same position as well? Yes, I, in fact, in my testimony, I said I support, uh, I am aware of the amendments that he's proposing and I would support that. So everybody's on the same page yes. insofar as the, the bill has to be amended to get the support, otherwise there is no support for it, right? Yeah, I, I, I yes. Okay, I, I, that's I all support. I wanted to know. Yeah. Thank you, Chair, appreciate the question. Uh, members, any other questions? I have a follow-up question for uh, Mr. Emery. Okay, the original purpose of the bill was to fold in the requirement for uh, budgeting for fire safety improvements along with other reserve requirements that are covered by Chapter 514B uh, HRS. And in the original draft, part of what potentially could become a problem was that the imposition or the addition of fire safety uh, planning and forecasting could impose an even greater burden on the immediate calculations for uh, reserve requirements. Would your amendments help distribute and spread out uh, the planning and forecasting for the fire safety improvements in context of all other um, reserve requirements that are being met? Yes. I would just like to say, you see, I'm big on disclosure. And so some of the other proposed amendments are all about disclosure so that owners know what's available. They need to know they have a life safety requirement. They need to know what the cost is going to be. However, they need some time to adjust what their final solution will be, how to pay for it. My proposal, we allowed to forecast a loan or a special assessment, buys them time to figure that out. At the same time, identifies clearly to all of them in the reserve study they have that obligation. Okay. In your, um, I guess, proposed amendments, part of what you are uh, seeking is a, I guess, sort of an expansion of a board's ability to, under, I guess, emergency conditions, be able to pursue, um, I guess, um, borrowing money solely for extraordinary expenses associated with um, those conditions described in Section 514B, et cetera. Is that intended to address the fire safety improvements that are proposed in Senate Bill 855, or is that to address a different kind of situation? Well, the, the current bill says that uh, it defines emergency conditions, which is beyond life safety. Right, fire. right, right. And the reason I proposed the language I did was because of the famous Florida collapse of the building. You know, the problem the Florida boards got in trouble with, they had no ability to resolve the problem because they had no ability to assess and or borrow the money. So uh, when I wrote the proposed language, I wanted the emergency condition that the board has the authority to borrow if, as I defined in that, if a licensed architect engineer says this is a problem, I included in the amendment that life safety is a part of that. So they would have the ability to borrow without the owner's approval. But it's a, it's a different story when you look at Florida. I know quite a bit about Florida. I was the federal liaison for Hawaii for 10 years and worked with all the states on the legislation. So I understand them well. And so my answer would be I'm trying to allow boards immediate ability to solve problems before someone gets hurt. Okay. Would you anticipate that... Um most condo associations would be supportive of this sort of expansion of emergency authority if they had those kinds of conditions uh, explained to them? Or do you think this would be kind of alarming, you know, to those who view condo boards as um, already operating with a lot of um, unfettered discretion? Well, condo owners are hard to predict at times. <laughs> But the reality of this is a common sense solution. You, know, you don't want people to get hurt. If they have a structural problem, they have to fix it. 
if they have life safety equipment, we want right. them to fix it. Right. Right. And this gives the board an easy mechanism to address it and, uh, and not have the excuse, well, the others wouldn't let me do it. So uh, it's common sense that we should require associations and its boards to deal with an emergency situation that includes anything that, that affects the project itself and the life safety of the people. So uh, I'm not gonna say everybody's gonna jump around it, but I would say the majority of people would not oppose this. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Members, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move to the next measure on the agenda, SB 988. Uh, relating to condominiums, this requires associations of condominium owners to purchase earthquake insurance for their entire building. Uh, first up, Philip Nerny in opposition. Thank you for standing on your testimony. Uh, DCCA Insurance Division with comments. Uh, good morning, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, uh, members of the committee. I, I'm trying to start my camera, but I, I, it's, it's not working. <laughs> uh, good morning, Gordon. We have Gordon Ito from the DCCA Insurance Division. There you go. Please proceed. Uh, yeah, good, good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Gordon Ito testifying on behalf of the Department of Commerce and Consumer Care. Uh, we offer comments on this bill. Um, you know, we appreciate the intent. However, we know it may be challenging for condo associations to obtain for quick insurance at this time. I'll be available for you to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Paul Ireland Crofton in opposition. Good morning, Chair Gabriel, Vice Chair for Canada. My name is Paul Ireland Crofton. I just want to add that this cost of additional oh, They can't hear you on the okay. on the feed. Yeah, I just want to add as a homeowner, this cost would be passed down to homeowners, even if associations could or would obtain the insurance that are that would be required under this bill, which doesn't look like they would be able to obtain. Um, it, it would really be very expensive for homeowners to be able to pay this. Um, in my association alone, with respect to water claims, our deductible increased by 25 grand and um, or pardon me, the deductible increased to 50 grand while the insurance for the premium increased by 25 grand. And that cost is not only gonna be passed on to the homeowners, but I'm gonna to have to pay more for my HO6 policy. Now, if this measure were passed, even if associations could pay for the uh, earthquake insurance, that also would be passed on to the homeowners. Um, with the number of earthquakes that we presently do not have, I think the measure would be very unreasonable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Greg Masakian in support, uh, in opposition, I'm sorry. Do we have him online? Uh, yes, I'm here. Good morning. Thanks again for the opportunity to um, provide testimony. I'm just gonna uh, read a, a slightly different version of my testimony and a, a very condensed version and some additional thoughts. Uh, so the cost of earthquake insurance can be very expensive. At my association, we are already paying over $500,000 for insurance in 2023, uh, which does not include earthquake insurance. Uh, associations throughout the US routinely make the decision whether or not to purchase earthquake insurance as a separate policy from their master policy. This is done each year at their annual meetings by a vote of the membership. And I'm familiar with this because I've uh, participated in other associations uh, in California, or at least one in California, and I'm familiar with others within this, the states uh, on the mainland. So I, I would like to highlight one excerpt from SB 988 from the bill itself where it states the legislature further finds that condominiums are governed by associations in which all owners of condominium units are voting members. Shouldn't the voting members of the association decide what happens at the association with respect to a large expenditure and determine if they want earthquake insurance by voting? I ask the committee and all state legislators to please vote against SB 988 or amend it to require a vote by the membership for or against earthquake insurance at association annual meetings. I'm actually um, endorsing an amendment and, and voting with the amendment, but otherwise without the amendment, I, I do not support this bill. Mahalo for the time to testify. Thank you very much. Uh, Jane Sugimura in opposition. Yes, um, we stand on my testimony. Thank you for standing on your testimony. Honolulu Tower AOAO in opposition. Makaha Valley Towers in opposition. Palehua Townhouse Association in opposition. The Palms at Wailea in opposition. 
CAI Hawaii in opposition. AOU Pomoho Camp in opposition. Mark K. McKellar in opposition. Uh, Elaine Ponlilio in opposition. Kulalani Ma at Monalani Association of Apartment Owners in opposition. White Sands Village AOAO in opposition. AOAO Lakeview Sands in opposition. Kiala O Wailea AOUO in opposition. Community Association uh, Associations Institute in opposition. Will Karen in support. And uh, following uh, Waikoloa Village Association in opposition and the following individuals all in opposition. Richard Emery, Lynn Madison, Ann Anderson, Lance Fujisaki, Carol Walker, Nani Lavin. Oh, please, please proceed. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I uh, had not intended to say, but that's what I had one comment. Um, you know, currently right now, uh, throughout the state, I'm doing presentations and it's called Hawaii Condos, The Next Frontier, The Future of Maintenance Fees, Reserve Studies, and Affordable Housing. And I have a lot of data to support the thing that I say. I only wanted to bring up one thing. Every time we get these legislative mandates, which have to be paid by the owners, it affects the ability to have affordable housing. As these maintenance fees rise, we're actually pricing ourselves totally out of the market because the industry itself is facing the same inflationary pressure, the same wage pressure, the same pressure everybody else is. I have condos that are raising their maintenance fees beyond what we're talking about today, 20 to as high as 48%. Mm -hmm. So I think we just have to be cautious because we're in a very low seismic area for earthquakes. I, I've been here 48 years. I don't remember an earthquake came in 48 years. But the reality of it is, I just wanted to point out that when we look at these things, as well as our intentions may be, it has an adverse effect on affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nani Lavin, Laurie Sokach, both in opposition. Uh, the rest in opposition, Tony Nodin, Larry McGuire, Steve Glanstein, Pamela Schell, William Schallenberg. Members, uh, is there anyone else who would like to testify? Members, questions? Senator McKelvey. Uh, Jane? Uh, just to the gentleman's on Zoom's comment, I mean, right now, let's just say that a board wanted to somehow buy earthquake insurance or buy asteroid insurance. I mean, they could go ahead and vote as a board to purchase such an exquisite but interesting line of insurance, right? I yes, mean, they can. They don't need a mandate to do that. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, members, any other questions? All right, seeing none, we'll move to the last measure on this agenda, SB 729, relating to board members. This measure requires members of, uh, of boards of directors and officers of condominium associations, cooperative housing corporations, and fine community associations to certify the receipt and reading of certain documents or complete a board leader course from an instructor certified by the Community Associations Institute or similar, similar nationally recognized organization. Uh, first up in support, uh, Jane Sugimura. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, start with the caveat. I, these types of bills have been introduced yearly, and I have always opposed them because I, I felt that, they, you know, uh, that they were impractical, you know, to, uh, and it would discourage uh, board members from mm -hmm. volunteering. Uh, to serve, but over the years, I've seen problems with board members. We have CAI has seminars and my group has seminars, and you know, and we have lots of people who come. This bill is not intended for that, but we have lots of people who don't show up at their seminars, and they just create issues for owners and residents in their buildings. And so, reluctantly, I have come uh, to the position where you know we support at least requiring the board members to review their governing documents uh, and to take some educational uh, instruction. And I just suggest some changes. Uh, number one is to make uh, change the or to and at line, uh, page two, line eight. In other words, require review uh, um, that the board members sign a certification that they've received and reviewed the governing documents. And um, uh, number two, to require 
all board members uh, to certify that they've reviewed their governing documents within 90 days after the effective date of the bill instead of uh, after their uh, election, mainly because you know the, the most boards have staggered terms um, and uh, also to require the completion of the training within one year from the effective date of the bill. Um, and instead of uh, having a national organization do the training, I suggest that uh, it be done under the direction of the Real Estate Commission uh, and that the Real Estate Commission be allowed Thank to- Thank you very use. much. Okay. Thank I, you. I, yeah. I stand on my testimony. Well, uh, you know, please, please stick around in case there are questions. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Larry McGuire in opposition. I stand on my testimony in opposition. Thank you for standing on your testimony. Uh, Real Estate Commission in opposition. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Kilkalala, Vice Chair Fukunaga, uh, Committee members, Katie Klein, Hans, Condominium Specialist with the Real Estate Commission. Uh, we sent out a written testimony in opposition requesting a sunrise analysis. Uh, thank you, and also available for any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, CAILAC Hawaii in support. Not present on Zoom, Chair. Thank you, Hawaii State Association of Parliamentarians in opposition. Not present on Zoom, Chair. Okay, Jeff Sedino in support. Good morning again, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. My name is Jeff Sedino and I support this bill. As mentioned previously, Hawaii has more claims filed and paid out for board members breaking the law than much larger states of California, New York, or Florida. Board education is badly needed to mitigate this. In 2017, my AOAO filed a lawsuit against me with Hawaiiana as the property manager and Porter McGuire as their attorneys, the biggest companies in the condo industry. In three years, Hawaiiana assigned six different represent representatives to our property and Porter McGuire assigned six attorneys to me. My firsthand experience is that the property managers are the more, most poorly trained people with the highest turnover that I have ever worked with. This poor education is a dangerous situation that benefits the attorneys because it is their cash cow. Separately, Porter McGuire filed a second lawsuit against me in 2020 and made even more money. This is not an isolated problem. It is systemic and ongoing at the biggest property managers and attorney firms in the industry. Unfortunately, it is the condo owners that pay the price, a price that most condo owners cannot afford to pay. Educate the board members so that problems can be solved at the association level, instead of using the property managers who have very poor training or using the attorneys who make more money when there are more problems. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony. Thank you very much, Paul Ireland Koftenau in opposition. Good morning. Hey. Good morning, Chair Kale Kalole, Vice Chair Fukunaga. My name is Paul Ireland Koftenau, um, and I oppose this measure. I think what the legislature should remember when it sees measures like this is that board members serving on condominium or plan community association boards are voluntary. Um, measures like this do go in a direction of trying to make them more like licensed officials. Um, I think that it's very it's a very dangerous and treacherous path. Um, these these boards, I think we, we also should remember that there are educational opportunities like what Jane for HCCA mentioned and with CAI available. Um, what this measure overlooks is that there are not very many nationally or recognized organizations in Hawaii. CAI is one of them, but um, I'm very concerned that CAI will not be able to fulfill the requirements of board members that this measure would require. Um, so for those reasons, I oppose this measure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Where'd I go? Thank, Greg Masaki. Thank you. I'm right here. This... Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to um, make a quick statement here. So I thank you for the again for the opportunity to speak. SB 729 will provide much needed board of directors training and certification and will eliminate the excuses often made by directors when they improperly conduct association business that they are just volunteers. A seat on any board of directors must be filled by qualified candidates and the volunteer excuse was and is unacceptable. The results can clearly be seen in the many mismanaged associations throughout Hawaii. 
those on the board need to be required to go through mandatory training and certification and certify that they have read their governing documents so they know what is expected of them in their fiduciary duty. My personal experience at my association has confirmed what every legislator should know, that there are many unqualified directors on the board, and this is negatively impacting my association. This is repeated across associations throughout Hawaii, and I have heard this from many concerned condominium owners. The result is abuse of power and malfeasance, and the solution begins with SB 729, followed by an ombudsman's office to oversee condominiums and HOAs. Directors on association boards need to know their responsibilities and duties, which also include reading and understanding HRS 514B. Abuse of their positions need to result in oversight and enforcement by the Hawaii Attorney General's office until an ombudsman is in place. I ask that you please amend SB 729 to remove the word or, so I'm in agreement with Jane, which provides for an option to either certify that governing documents are read or take a certified course. Both are important and should be required. I also ask that SB 729 be amended to include the requirement that all directors certify that they have read and are familiar with Hawaii revised statutes 514B. I again ask that you very much the support. Thank you. Palihua Townhouse Association in support. AOAO Waikiki Sunset in opposition. AOUO Puamoho Camp in opposition. AOAO Lakeview Sands in opposition. Honolulu Tower AOAO in opposition. Law Offices of Mark McKellar in opposition. Kiala O Wailea AOUO in opposition. Late testimony in opposition from the Waikoloa Village Association. The following individuals also in opposition. Richard Emery. Good morning. Good morning again. I had not planned to testify. I'm hearing all this information. I thought I would just make two quick statements. First of all, CAI has no course. It doesn't exist today. Both industry organizations, HCCA and CAI, offer new board training. But it's a three-hour-plus course that they pay for that's offered typically once a year. If you look at Hawaii condos, there's 2,073 condos in the state of Hawaii. 1,079 are less than 50 units in size. Many are 2 units, 10 units, 12 units, 14 units. And to impose these kind of obligations on the industry at this time without looking at this more broadly, I certainly believe in education. But I'm not sure this bill addresses it appropriately. So I stand to post. Thank you very much, Lynn Matasau, in opposition. Lance, uh, the following individuals all in opposition, Lance Fujisaki, Jeff Marsh, Laura Bearden, Carol Walker, Mary Freeman, Pamela Schell, uh, Lila Moore with comments and some suggested amendments, Adeline Porter in support, David Levi in support, and Nancy Masuda in support. So all the testimony we, we've we received on this, is there anyone else who would like to testify? Sure, yeah, briefly. Please. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Phil Mooney. I'm Chair, Vice Chair, Committee Members, excuse me. Uh, I've represented associations for over 30 years. I would echo Jane's, what, what I interpret to be a slippery slope argument. Finding volunteers for these organizations is difficult, number one. Uh, and they are supposed to be self-governing. And so I just want to echo the point that there are difficulties associated with this and going too far down the path of uh, requiring uh, these volunteers to do various things can be problematic. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Members, questions? Senator McKelvey for the Real Estate Commission. Is he still here? You there? Good morning, Senator McKelvey. Yeah, hi. Um, you call for a sunrise study uh, of this bill, but we usually do sunrise studies when we're going to license or regulate a new profession like school psychologists. I don't see anything in the measure where we're going to be licensing uh, this. It's just simply a certification of education. How, why would we do a sunrise study for it? Yeah, it's kind of curious. Um, if you were to impose a requirement on an uh, unregulated uh, type of individuals, in this case, the, the board directors, um, then that would be a uh, sort of like 
in order to just to become the, the director, you have to satisfy these requirements, similar to a licensure scheme where you have to obtain these ed educational requirements to get your license. It's kind of similar. But you're not getting a license. It's just educational requirements for board members to review their docs and take the training. There's no licensure involved. So I don't see how Sunrise study is applicable for it. Anyway, thank you, Chair. Appreciate the opportunity to ask the question. Sure. Would, would you like to follow up to that? Mr. Kleinhans? Oh, sorry, sir. Did, um, did you, have, you have a response to that? Oh, no, 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 I understood. Okay, thank you. Senator Richards. Thank you. Thank you. I think, I'm not sure to ask, but Jane, I think I'd like to ask Oh, you. before you, let, let's have, I have a question for DCCA okay. before we, okay. um, if I may. While we, while we have you on Zoom, uh, multiple testifiers indicated in their testimony that, you know, board members already, uh, that fiduciary duties, uh, you know, currently exist for board members, and that essentially renders this bill unnecessary. Are there any ref affirmative requirements placed on uh, members of boards in the statute? Uh, yes, board member uh, directors and the managing agents in the statute are required to serve as a fiduciary in accordance with uh, 414D HRS, I believe that's a nonprofit corporation act. It's in the 514B. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for that, Senator Richards. Okay, thank you, Chair. Um, Jane, I think this question may be for you. Um, and if not, maybe Richard could weigh on this as well. Uh, question is getting people to volunteer is always tough. And if we don't have enough board members, how do we function as a board if you can't even make a quorum? Uh, and then what happens to the, the association? Uh, I, uh, as I indicated, I've always opposed these, these types of bills because they've come up, you know, perennially. And, um, but I've seen, there's been too many times when I, when people come to me and if, you know, if, the, if somebody had told the board before, you know, it became an issue, that they couldn't do certain things, it would have avoided the situation. And as I've testified, you know, CAI has seminars, Hawaii Council has seminars. We've been doing it for years. And over the years, I think we've trained thousands of people, thousands of board members. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how you, you can exempt, you know, those people who come to seminars from, you know, this requirement, but you know, there's a lot of people that don't come to the training and and what when when you know because they don't know or they don't care they result in situations that i think you legislators are hearing about the boards that are you know that are abusive that are arrogant who say you know you know shut up and sit down you know those kinds of things are not permitted and if they if, if you know the board members came had some kind of training they would know better that they can't, you know, do stuff like that. But, you know, I don't know how I, I, I you know, that's why I said, you know, I reluctantly, you know, supported this type of bill because I, I'm trying to see where we can get. And that's why one of my suggestions is to do a video, have the real estate commission, you know, pay for a professional video, you know, that can be viewed on the internet or on a device. And you know you can get certification, okay. and have some kind of exemption for board members who have attended the CAI or the Hawaii Council board training. You know, I guess you know the purpose of this uh, of this is to, and and I think owners, disgruntled owners, would also agree if they had board members who knew what they were doing or knew that if they did certain things that it was not permitted by the statute or their, you know, breach of fiduciary duty, that they wouldn't do it. Yeah, and it's I, just, I, they, I see where you're going with this. Um, we could avoid a lot of probably the, the conversations today if the boards were better trained. The problem is if you put it too onerous, you're not gonna get anybody to serve on the board, so you have a catch-22 going on. Right, out. and, and okay. so, um, and, and that's why I have suggested using the condo ed fund to have the, and, and the real estate commission, if you go on their website, and I tell everybody who calls me, Go on the website. They've got a terrific website. They've got these little like three minute videos. 
you know, if, if you have never gone to the Real Estate Commission website, you should go. I mean, they have uh, a, a directory, they have, they talk about different issues, arbitration, mediation, how to do, you know, just, you know, you know, how to do, how people do maintenance fees, reserves, it's all explained and they've got these three minute videos. And it, to me, you know, that, that, you know, it's, it's education. It's, if you know what you're supposed to be doing that I think most board members will do the right thing. It's, it's the, the problem, paradox, the though, problem yeah. is, is that they don't I, know. Yeah. And that, so if we mandate it, but we may not get anybody to sign up and this is what, what you were struggling with. And my concern is if we don't have anybody on the board, does the board cease to function and then what happens? So then I, you know, what I, I would say is that you would do. exempt those board members who have had training uh, from the requirement yeah. of the certification. And like I said, over the years, we have trained thousands. We CAI and I, Hawaii I Council, it. and yeah. you know our, our 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 seminars. I mean, we get hundreds of people show so, up. If I could ask a follow up, yeah. right, maybe for DC, but you're here. Uh, it does seem like the you know the fiduciary responsibilities itemized in the or codified in the statute and present in the bylaws are in many ways functionally unenforceable. No, the fiduciary duty is in the statute. Uh, it, it says the words are the, the board owes a fiduciary duty to the association that gets kind of misinterpreted to mean to the owners. It doesn't mean it means to the current owners and to the future owners. So the board has to make decisions. So, so I guess the enforcement mechanism for potential breaches of fiduciary it's a lawsuit. is a lawsuit. Right. And, and owners and, and board and, and, and people who file lawsuits. There have been decisions or, or potentially arbitration. You, you can get or, judgment or potentially the election of new members. Of oh yes. Or re remove the board and uh, re replace them. But there have okay, been, that's, yeah, there, there have been okay, judgments you. against, you know, board members. Members, any other? Senator uh, uh, just let me, couldn't the board itself go ahead and say, okay, for all the board members coming in, we're going to require you to watch a video and do a training. Yeah, before. they can do that, but so they, they don't. So they can do this themselves now. Right? Yeah, they can do it themselves now. So and maybe this would be better for a reso then to urge or, you know, or, boards or, and condos to And do what I've urged the real estate commission to do is use their money because they can use condo ed money because this is like dispute resolution because it goes to the, to the, to the source of the problem, how to make the board more receptive to owner's concerns. Have them spend the money to educate, maybe do television okay, ads taking or money out of condo ed fund would be for you're taking money out of the dispute resolution and funding that. No, that that is a condo ed fund. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so if they use that to, you know, go on social media, develop a, you know, hire professionals to develop a message, you know, do T V ads, educate the public that this is what you know you need to do. You don't want to go to court. You don't want to spend time in mediation and arbitration. You know, if you had board members who knew what they were doing, maybe you'd end up with a situation where you wouldn't have uh, these disruptions. You're always going to have disruption, but it might minimize. You know, it would minimize if you had board members who knew who were better educated as to what they were supposed to do. Like the drivers that didn't have accidents. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, members? Okay, seeing no other questions, uh, we're gonna, I think, you know, unless there are any comments, we can move right into decision-making. I do have recommendations. Okay, so we'll move into decision-making on this uh, 9.40 a.m. agenda. The first measure, uh, SB 402, this is relating to uh, Enforcement provisions against de minimis violations of association bylaws. I, I do appreciate the testimony on this. Um, my recommendation is to defer this measure indefinitely. Uh, I, I, I do understand this. I, I, I think I do understand the situation, but this does reach pretty aggressively into uh, the authority of associations to potentially enforce and uh, uphold their fiduciary responsibilities. Uh, any discussion? Okay, we'll move on to SB 884, which is uh, the leasehold conversion measure. 
the recommendation is to pass this measure out with a defective effective date of July 1, 2050, uh, and keep it moving to WAM. Members, any discussion? Okay, Vice Chair SB 884, passing with amendments. Chair Boltai. Thank you. Vice Chair Boltai, Senator McKelvey. Yes. Senator Richards. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Measure is adopted. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next measure, SB 921, relating to statutes, well, limitations of actions. This is the statute of repose bill. The recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Members, any discussion? Oh. Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair SB 921, passing unamended, Chair Votsai. Thank you. Vice Chair Votsai, Senator McKelvey. Yes. Senator Richards. Aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Measure is adopted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next measure, SB 855, relating to condominium reserve requirements. The recommendation is to defer decision making on this measure to next Thursday, which is the 23rd uh, at 9.30 a.m. in this room, 229, so that we can have further discussion uh, with the community and try and work out uh, some amendments to this measure. Uh, SB 988 relating to condominiums. This is the earthquake insurance bill. I think we have successfully uh, unanimously united all condominium stakeholders in opposition of this measure. So I'm going to recommend that we defer it indefinitely. The final measure on the agenda is SB 729 uh, relating to boards of directors. The recommendation is to also defer decision making on this bill until next Thursday, the 23rd at 9.30 a.m. in room 229 uh, to see if, you know, there are a couple different directions that we could go on this measure, but I appreciate the, the discussion and the need to potentially do something. Uh, on that note, we do have one decision-making agenda, so I will gavel out of this 9.40 a.m. agenda, and IT let us know when we can go in on 12.34. Okay, so I'm going to open on, this is decision making on the 9.35 a.m. Thursday, February 16th uh, CPN agenda. We're here in room 229 to uh, consider SB 1234 relating to tax credits. This is the measure that establishes a tax credit for certain owners of uh, condominiums whose association uh, is increasing maintenance fees to comply with a county ordinance requiring automatic fire sprinkler systems or alternative prevention uh, and fire safety systems. Uh, we've tried a couple different ways on this one. The tax credit, uh, uh, I think, is not really a, a, an applicable. Um, uh, it, it cannot be established in a way that's really applicable to these situations. So I'm going to recommend we defer this measure. Any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, we're adjourned. Thank you very much.